Hi, this is Jeff Zeig. Here I am in Phoenix, Arizona at the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation with stories about Milton Erickson. In the last video, I recounted a story with my friend Paul and a silent video that turned out to be very useful in my instruction about understanding Erickson's work and understanding how to effect the philosophy of utilization in everyday life. There was a, another time I brought Paul to visit Dr. Erickson. I, that's how I remember it. And I had an idea for my dissertation. It was a complex idea about color blindness and I thought that I could, about color vision. And I thought that if I could affect this, I could say something about the nature of hypnotic hallucinations. The effect that I wanted to try to get was for a hypnotic subject to hallucinate looking at the world as if it was through filtered glasses. In some of the early uh, ways of creating three dimensions, you had filtered glasses where one side you were looking through a red filter and the other side you were looking through a green filter. And if you looked at a movie or a comic book uh, in particular, that could become three-dimensional because of the way in which the uh, human uh, eye understands colors and, uh, and can merge things together into create, creating a three-dimensional effect. So I thought that if I could get a hypnotic subject to have a visual hallucination of seeing, of imagining looking through a red filter with his right eye and a green filter through his left eye, then I could build my dissertation. As it happened, that was not the case. I did a, a dissertation of using bilateral tympanic temperature, temperature at the eardrum, as a way of understanding activation of good and poor hypnotic subjects. Uh, and so not knowing how to create this effect and knowing that Paul was a good hypnotic subject, I uh, brought Paul to, to Dr. Erickson and I asked Dr. Erickson, could he please work with Paul? And in his work with Paul, could he get that effect? And he was willing to try and did a very uh, um, credible job of uh, using his indirect technique with Paul and Paul couldn't get the effect. And okay, but at the end of the trance, Paul was agitated and I couldn't understand it. It was okay, he didn't get the effect. And Paul said, I've got to go out. And Paul went out and when he came back, he came back with about a kilogram of chocolate and a gallon of milk. Uh, I said, Paul, we're, we're, we're leaving the next day. We can't possibly consume that much milk and that much chocolate. And Paul was embarrassed. And I said, why did you buy that? And he said, I, I, I don't know. Well, we had a short period of time because we had a morning flight the next day and we had a short period of time in which we could visit with Dr. Erickson. And when he came into the room, the first thing he said was, now what unusual thing did Paul do when he left the room? And he didn't know uh, in, in any way uh, about Paul buying a gallon of milk and a kilogram of chocolate. Uh, so we explained that that's what he did. And uh, why would Dr. Erickson expect that? And Dr. Erickson said, well, I, I was talking about polar opposites and Paul, red and green, for example. He wasn't talking that directly. But he said Paul had built up this charge inside himself of polar opposites. So he went out and he bought something, a lot of something white and a lot of something black. And it was at that moment that I understood something about the way in which Dr. Erickson would use his evocative method, his conceptual method of communication to build associations. And for those of you who are experienced with hypnosis and you've read about Dr. Erickson, you've read about the interspersal technique. The interspersal technique was a paper that Dr. Wrote, Dr. Erickson wrote, I believe in about 1963 or 1964, and it was a technique for pain control, where on one level, the social level, he was talking with a debilitated cancer patient who was suffering from very severe uh, cancer pain. 
and uh, also had been a florist, and Dr. Erickson was talking about a tomato plant and the growth of a tomato plant, but interspersing into that dialogue on the social level, psychological level orientations, psychological level concepts that would awaken in the man, who Dr. Erickson called Joe, a series of thoughts, memories, perceptions that would mollify the period of pain as he became absorbed in them. So Dr. Erickson was an expert at using psychological level communication, building up a reservoir of constructive associations, and eventually these constructive associations of thoughts, feelings, behaviors, memories, perceptions, attitudes, postures, eventually these associations would overflow into more effective behavior. This is not about changing negative thoughts into positive thoughts. This is about building up a wealth of pre-conscious associations. In hypnosis, this is a derivative of idiodynamic behavior, the way thoughts and associations are realized. If I talk vividly enough about eating a lemon, somebody could salivate because the associations that were created could lead to a, a, a response. And this was a method, a, an associative method in Dr. Erickson, building up this wealth of associations. Now, in modern social psychology, we have research that informs the way in which people respond without the necessity of their understanding the cues that led to the response and sometimes without even understanding the response. But Dr. Erickson was practicing at a time before social psychology had provided the research basis for what he had done. But this method of building up associations, well, that is a method that's been used historically in the arts and uh, where artists create references, illusions, and those illusions uh, build in their psychological value until they have a behavioral effect. So that moment uh, with, with Dr. Erickson and Paul was one of those moments that I could begin to understand how he thought about developing associations that would eventually drive behavior. This is Jeff Zeig. Here I am in Phoenix, Arizona at the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation with stories about Milton Erickson.